The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 20, what is it, 24th? 25th, the January 25th edition, the uh, terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a sea of green out there. All the use trade trading the upside. In fact, most everything is trading the upside. The exceptions being Tesla, the euro, the healthcare sector, uh, and uh, natural gas, which is uh, basically flat out there. But you got the Dow up 74 points. S&P's up 20. NASDAQ 187. Russell's up 10. Semis are up 45 points out there. Trannies are up uh, 116. Gold's up 4 bucks. Silver's up 7 pennies. Lights recruit up buck 78. 30 year treasury up 26 ticks. Printed out at 120.01. Leading our charge to the upside, dollar wise, is United Rentals. A $73 move, almost 13%. Lamb Research, $41, almost 5%. Asthma Holdings, 31 one dollars three and six tenths percent equinix 25 three percent ibm is up 22 bucks that's a 12 percent move there the shakers to the downside humana uh 58 bucks 15 percent northrop gummon 37 bucks eight percent united health 32 bucks six percent tesla 22 bucks and molina healthcare is down 17 printing out at um 349.27 so let's uh, begin our day by doing what well let's go see how futures are trading you know what we're going to do here? Let's do this. Brent called yesterday with a question about the annual annual charts, how price is trading, what kind of meaning can we draw from it? So why don't we do that? Why don't we step through this here? Uh, so one step at a time. So for, I'm going to change back and forth through, through a couple of screens out here. So let's start by taking a look at the U.S. indices and understand where we're at. These are all the U.S. indices that we're taking a look at. So the very first thing, that I would throw out there to you is when you begin trading above the prior year's high, that is a bullish signal. Now, that doesn't mean it's not going to pull back. It doesn't mean it won't top. It just means that is a bullish signal. If we just establish that, it's like driving down the expressway. You come into some traffic. You get past that traffic. You got, you know, you get your Waze app out there. There's no police anywhere. And you can floor it. You can open it up. And that's what happens when you're trading at new all-time highs out there. So if we take a look at the Dow Jones Industrials, these are the yearly charts that we're looking at out here. We are trading above last year's high. That is in a bullish condition. The S&P 500, the exact same thing. The NASDAQ 100, the exact same thing. The Russell, not so much. Not only are we not near its all-time highs, we're not even, you know, in a close, well, we're close, but not that close to last year's high out there. Semiconductors, they're on fire. They're trading above last year's high. The transports are not. The NASDAQ Composite is not just yet, nor the New York Stock Exchange. So what does all this, oh, and then one last thing out here. Let's take a look at the XAU. 
the XAU right now. It's trading below last year's open. It's not trading below last year's low out there, but certainly something for us to keep an eye on. But let's come back to these indices that are trading above their highs. They are in bullish conditions here. So someone might say, well, and I think someone should say, well, I don't know, Stevie, that's the U.S. What's going on around the globe? And I think that's a good question. So let's go see what else is going on around the globe. We should be able to find some charts that help us do that. Let me see if this is it. Uh, this is, you know, so this is one way of taking a look at it. These are yearly charts out here. And I put this together so that each of you at home can do the same thing. In other words, I'm not showing the indices, I'm showing the ETFs. So as long as you've got some type of uh, data connection out there, you're gonna be able to pull these up. You could recreate this chart or maybe even something better. But here I'm showing the Dow Diamonds, the all-time high, the, uh, not the all, well, the all-time high is basically a couple days ago at 381.08, but 377.69 is last year's high out there. And as long as price remains, but yesterday was actually a test and rejection on a daily time frame uh, of last year's high out there. If we take a look at what's going on over in the UK, Look how far away it is from an all-time high. This is the EW, EWU, by the way. So we're looking at these ETF structures out here. Not above the 2023 high, nor is the Australian uh, ETF, EWA, uh, nor is the uh, uh, Canadian ETF, EWC. The MCHI, this is the China uh, shares out here, has been trading. Right now it's trading... It's still trading uh, below. Yeah, it's trading below last year's low out there. I mean, that's that. So just like if you trade above last year's high, you're in a bullish condition. You start trading below last year's low. You're in a bearish condition out there. Uh, you are starting to get very close. You're trading by two pennies above the INDA. That's the India ETF out there. Uh, you're getting close to last year's high inside the EWG. That's related to Germany. Japan is the EWJ. That is trading above last year's high. It's suggesting that it wants to go target its all-time high out there. And then finally got the EEM, which is trading in between the low and the high from last year. So again, when we take a look at this, in the U.S., we have clear breakouts above last year's high. We take a look at what's going on internationally. We don't. Who do you want to bet on? Who do you want to put your money on? If you are global capital, global capital out there, you want your money in high liquid, large cap investments. That's why they like the Dow. I know many people like to trash the Dow, but boy, the Dow can provide us with a ton of information understanding international capital flows. All right, so what else can we do? clean out of this. This is the ES Mini, the NQ, and the Dow. So we're back to the futures contract. We're back to the daily time frame. And each of these are priced in dollars. That's on your left-hand side. Next to that is euros. Next to that is pounds. Next to that is yen. We are at new all-time highs uh, with regard to the ES Mini. Not the, We haven't made a new high today yet in terms of dollars, but we most certainly have in terms of euros. If you're taking a look at that, candle just today's candle alone the es mini in euros are you telling me you're a seller again on a daily basis we get a topping signal something along those lines i get it but basically there are buyers out there and they're going to remain to be buyers out there this is breaking out big time uh, well above uh, the 2023 high, we've got a breakout going inside the ES Mini and British Pounds. In Yen, it made a new all-time high yesterday, very close to doing that again today. This is where capital is flowing. You know that uh, what Jerry Maguire movie, right? Show me the money. I'm showing you the money, and I'm showing you where it's going, and it's U.S.-based. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, to summarize that last segment, I mean, we're, we're looking at the charts. I'm just narrating the charts for you. I'm showing you how instruments are trading in multiple currencies out there. That's so important. Why? Because let's just say you're over in Europe right now. Let's just say you're over in, uh, we're over in Italy. Uh, we're over in, you know, in Italy. Uh, let's go to Sicily, you and I. What are we going to be, what are the local people thinking? And they're thinking in terms of their currency. They're thinking in terms of the, of the euro. If we go over to the UK, we decide that, uh, well, it's a, yeah, we could we could start going to a pub over in the UK, right? Five hour time difference this time of year out there. We're just about to get started, but there we're going to be thinking in terms of pounds. Well, that's how they're thinking of the instruments. That uh, also they're taking a look at Tesla. We got Tesla up on our screens right now as an example. They're looking at that in terms of their currency and we need to understand how these instruments trade in those currencies and as long as there is capital that is global capital that's flowing into the u.s what that tells us is that any retracements any moves lower should be relatively mild out there okay let's take a look at tesla since it's up on our screen out here we talked about tesla yesterday we were trying to get a feel for where this might head to and we what we said was we said that if uh, tesla moves lower uh, today, we gave you a price figure, it's well below that, that it would trigger bar number nine of eight, or the bar following bar number nine of a TD nine count. So on a daily basis, Tesla is going to go ahead and complete a TD nine count bottom pattern. Period, end of story. Now, the cool thing about that is Tesla is also going to go ahead and confirm an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside. The swing point that it's dealing with out here, that was a swing point from the trading session of, come on, Steve, you worked that cursor, would you? It uh, looks like October the 30th. So October 30th, it was 136 million shares. We're at 93 million right now. I'm assuming we're going to get more than 136 million shares. Now we confirm an A to B equals CD to the downside. On a weekly basis, though, I'm not so sure about that. 
The weekly volume at the swing point is 621 million shares. So far, we're at 441. On a daily basis, like yesterday, Tesla did volume of 123. The day before, 100 million. The day before that, 100 million. So we're looking at about 125, 30 million shares maybe added to where we're at. 440, 545, 70. So this is taking out that swing point, the weekly swing point with lighter volume. Doesn't mean that it won't go ahead and complete the pattern. How will you know if it's going to complete the pattern? Well, that's the beauty of today's candle. You've got the TD Nike out pattern completing. If price starts trading below, not trading below, but closes below today's low, whatever that is, then that's going to tell us that this A to B equals CD pattern is likely to be fulfilled. Again, that initial price projection level would get us down to 159.91. We can see on the monthly time frame chart that we've got bullish profile structured support between 144 and 165 out there. So that becomes a target with the caveat that we could see a bounce. You could see a bottom today out here inside of Tesla because of that TD nine count pattern out there. Okay, nobody asked about it, but uh, it just happened to be on my screen, I believe, from yesterday. So, uh, Brent, I hope that helped you out with regard to the annual charts out there. Let's go to our next question. The next question is coming in from Hector. And Hector and Patty asked this question. By the way, I don't know if any of you saw. I know the full moon turns full this afternoon or maybe within the next hour or two out there, but it looked pretty darn full last night. So it was a pretty moon out there. You should go take a look at it this evening. But the, the question is... Does the full moon have any impact on the S&P 500 or gold? So that's a great question. And luckily, because of the uh, great folks over at Season X, we can answer that question. We can answer it for whatever years we want to go ahead and take a look at. What I've got up here right now is the S&P 500. You can see that in the upper left-hand corner. Over in the right-hand area, you can see the years. I've selected 25 years. Hopefully, that's enough data. And what I've got out here, we're not taking a look just yet at the full moon. We're taking a look at the U.S. GDP report. Why? Because I wanted to share this with subscribers uh, this morning. What we looked at this morning was the Dow. So I just switched that over to the S&P 500. What we can see here is that typically this uh, vertical line represents today. And what typically transpires, or at least has transpired on average, over the next 10 days is price moves higher. Typically in the S&P 500, the S&P 500 rallies for seven days out there. So that's what it tells us. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at full moons out here. To look at full moons, Stevie's just got to find it. Here we go. So, look, this is pretty cool because we've got, I was going to say it's cool. We've got full moons, lunar eclipse, solar eclipse. I used to, uh, we got the Super Bowl, AFC, NFC, uh, government shutdowns even. Um, so let's go take a look at the uh, full moon out here. Again, we still have the S&P 500 up on our screen, and we can see that the full moon typically leads to a rally inside of gold that lasts for four days, one blip to the downside, and then it resumes its way up to the upside. So this is the impact of the full moons over a 25-year period of time. How about 96 years, Stevie? Well, if you take a look at 96 years, it doesn't change the pattern that much. What if that's too much data? We want 10 years worth of data. There's your 10 years worth of data on the full moon for the S&P 500. Pretty much a similar type pattern out there. Now, let's go take a look at gold. Let's pull down Goldilocks and see how does gold trade during full moon. So here, we've got to go grab that event again. What's the full moon? Not the Fed rate change. Let's get down to this miscellaneous. I think that's where we had it. We got the full moon. Now, what I've got up here right now is I've got 10 years worth of data. We're looking at Goldilocks here. We can see that typically gold trades higher for about three days, flat to lower for a couple of days, and then it starts to resume its, uh, its, its uh, move higher. Let's take a look at 55 years worth of data. 55 years worth of data is not saying that uh, but what we looked at on 10 years worth of data is incorrect out there. Now, that's gold. That's for 55 years. That is for the full moon out there. Um, so we've got the full moon on Goldilocks, right? We did it on uh, we did it on uh, on the S and P 500. So to answer your question, what effect does the full moon have on the markets? At least the S and P and gold. It's a positive bias. Doesn't guarantee that that's what you're going to get. But great question, Hector and Patty. Thanks so much for uh, uh, for uh, for offering it up. All right, so the next question is coming in from Black, 777 Black inside the Tiger's Den. And 777 Black would like to take a look at Bitcoin. I believe the question was something like it's made about a 50% retracement. What do our charts tell us out here? So I'm going to look at the date, and I'm looking at the February future contract for Bitcoin out here, trading right now at about 40125 Let's take a look at the daily time frame chart. 
Let's pull this back so we got a good view of it. And what we can see out here, Jack, is that uh, this formed a roads momentum indicator top back on January 11th. That was the daily time frame that we're looking at. That was a bearish engulfing candle. The very next, and it closed below that green oscillator and change line. So it was also telling us is momentum had waned. The very next trading session, price gets back inside his profile. And then a couple trading sessions ago, four trading sessions ago, back on the 22nd, price closed below the bottom of that profile. That generated really the following day is what really generated a, a profile change in trend signal that suggests that price should head lower if you're asking me where should price head lower to the price target would be 35,750. Uh, Jack 35,750 is the TD nine count breakout level um, now what price needs to do if you were to see this is very much like the Tesla chart out here in fact almost exactly like it if today or tomorrow price is able to spike below spike below 38,840, that will trigger a TD nine count bottom. Short of that, we don't have any kind of a bottom here, and that suggests that that 35,750 level is its next price target. So 777 Black, I hope that helps you out with regard to Bitcoin. Weekly chart, I show prices also got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out here, and prices below profile. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. I still got the charts for Bitcoin on my screen out here. I was showing the wrong screen out there. So just to go through this real quickly out here, uh, Bitcoin on the daily time frame, Roadsman to Indicator top. Uh, we got a profile change of trend because price is below that profile. That's at 47.36. And as long as that remains the case, 35.7. 50 becomes that price target that's on the that's a daily td nike out breakout level you can see a roachment to indicator top on the weekly chart price is below the oscillator and change line it's lost its momentum out there um what else does dvc nothing else really other than that so it looks like uh, bitcoin wants to head lower out there let's move on to our next request it's from coda inside the tiger's den and coda would like to take a look at fxi so momentarily we'll get over to those charts this is not going to be it but if you give me a minute we'll get up there and here we go so we take a look at fxi china related you know this becomes complicated out here coda for me to really give you a great read on this uh the daily time frame because of all of the currency issues that we've got you've got all these gaps out there it becomes very difficult okay if I take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it cuts out some of the noise. It's maybe a little bit easier. And here what we can see is that a TD9 count bottom pattern is going to complete this week. It's going to, unless this thing rallies substantially, it, you'll have a TD9 count bottom pattern that will complete this week. You also have an A to B equals CD to the downside. Let me open up the chart, though, and make sure of that. Um, well, you're back at a prior swing point that had a TD9 count bottom as well. So let's check out the volume. So. I don't know if we've tested. First, let's see if we've tested the low. So the low on a weekly basis for FXI was the week of November 4th. That low was 2087. We got down this week to 2086. One penny. How about that? So now that's a test um, of that swing point. The volume was 278 back in November. Uh, this week, so far, we are at 273. Well, that's a bummer. So you're testing that swing point with volume. You know what that typically says uh, out here, Coda? Even if the you know price at this stage here has rejected it, that price should get back down there and retest that low at least again out there. So you are going to you are in wave. You, you have a potential wave number seven. We 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 don't really need that because the TD nine count bottom is is already in there. Now remember that pattern completes tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow is a retest of that low on lighter volume out there. Regardless. The one thing you need to see FXI do on a weekly basis to tell you that this is more than just a counter trend move would be to close above 2374. And the reason for that coda is because this was a bullish structured profile and price has now been below that profile level for more than two weeks. That tells us about a weekly change in trend signal out there. When you have bullish structured profiles and price closes below them. Uh, and then price tries to get back in where price will find resistance is either at the bottom or at the center. So really, the correct response, Stevie, would have been to say uh, the, where the counter trend rally, if this is only a counter trend move, would fail, would be between 2328 and 2374. So that's the weekly time frame chart. We take a look at FXI. It's got potential. It's just that uh, it's just that weekly volume issue that you've got to deal with. Uh, you wanted to also take a look at KWEB, KWEB out there. Now, again, on the daily time frame, just simply substantially difficult for me to really give you a great read uh, uh, out of this mess out there. But the weekly chart, not the same. Here on the weekly time frame, you've got bar number eight that looks like it'll complete this week. Bar number nine needs to, that means next week, you need to see a close below 2588. If you get that, KWEB will go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom pattern. Remember that bottom pattern could complete the following week out there. But the weekly time frame chart is saying there's something here. The daily time frame chart, what I can share with you there, Coda, is price is trading above resistance. That's the top of its profile. If it uh, remains above 2462 today, the signal there is you've got a daily change in profile change in trend signal. And that would suggest a move to 2646 out there. 2564, though, is another resistance level. That's the weekly oscillator and change line. And lo and behold, on KWEB, just like you had with FXI Coda, you've got a bullish structured profile that price has been below so if it's only a counter trend move inside of kweb 
it will find resistance between 2604 and 2661. You close above 2661, and then there's something else that is going on. So I hope that helps you out, Coda, with both FXI and KWeb. Thank you so much for taking the time to put in those requests. Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den has got a couple as well. The first one is Uber out there. And Uber looks like it wants to go ahead and negate its TD9 count top out there. It'll accomplish that task. It also was a Rhodes Mint Dominicator top. It'll accomplish that task today with a close above 60. 6561. So if Uber closed above 6561, that's in breakout mode and says it wants to head higher. I know you'd like me to give you some possible price targets out there. We're going to have to go back to my black background screens, I think, to do that. In the case of the weekly time frame chart, this has negated a TD9 count top out there. That's bullish. You're trading above profile. That's bullish. You're above the green oscillator and change line. That's bullish. The weekly chart for Uber is in a bullish breakout mode. The same can be said for the monthly time frame. And this monthly time frame chart is taking out its prior high, which was a TD nine count top out there. So Uber looks Uber good. And that was for Duncan Steve. Now let's try to figure out where Uber might be going to. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and change our screens again. Hopefully I remember to change back. I know somebody will remind me if I don't, but let's get these Uber charts up here and let's try to figure out where maybe this is headed to. So how are we going to do that? I'm looking for the chart with the least amount of noise. That's the monthly chart out here. So now we take a look at the monthly chart. We can draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. And this is going to apply certainly to the other charts as well. So I would say that what Uber is doing here, it's going to go target 66, 69, 69. Oh, how about that? 69.69 is the initial price target. The reason I say initial price target is the retracement was just slightly less than a 0.382 retracement. We can see that price along the left side of that C to D leg. Typically, when you do a 0.382 retracement or something less than a 0.618, you're going to do more than a one to one A to B equals C to the upside. Certainly, when you start traveling along the left hand side of that C to D leg, tells you about a stronger move. That's another reason for this to do more than a one to one. So Uber should target that 29.60 level out there. Uh, Duncan, I hope that that helps you out. You also wanted to take a look at ticker symbol C-A-R-T. Let me just push this up here on the uh, black background screens and see, did, that was to remind myself. So this has not been trading very long. So the information on CART could be pretty minimal, but let's go take a look and see what we can do for Duncan Steve on CART, which is Ma Maple Bear Inc. out there. Maple Bear Inc. So now, what I can share with you about Maple Bear Inc. is this formed a wave number seven and Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It accomplished that task on January the 8th. Now we have price that's moved higher. It's pulled back and tested its oscillator and change line after trading changing color. This is a bullish signal out here. I would say that what uh, CART is going to do out here, Duncan, is go at least test the top of that daily profile. That's one that formed yesterday, 2741. What might have really taken place yesterday is the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside. Don't know. We won't know. Volume today so far in this is about uh, 592,000 shares. The swing point itself has got volume of 2.7 million. So you're coming. You know, you're not you're not up towards that just yet. But you'd love to see this thing pick up some steam. But I would have to say, what's Card going to do? It should go target 27.41. So I hope that helps you out, Duncan. Thanks so much for the request. We come back from this break. We're going to take a look at TSM for Nichols, FDX, Federal Express for David, Panama City. LB wants to take a look at URNM and Fletch, and you. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Good match earlier this morning. I don't know if you were up at uh, 4 o'clock, uh, 5 o'clock this morning. It was the Coco Golf and uh, Sablinka. Uh, I probably mispronounced her name out there. Was a great, first set was a, a great uh, set of uh, tennis out there. In any event, uh, let's get back to the uh, requests out here. Nicholas writes in. Nicholas wants to take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor. Now, Nicholas's question each of you are looking at this chart out here. Hopefully you're doing a uh, home game out there. But his question is buy, sell, or hold when you take a look at the charts here for Taiwan Semiconductor. What say you out there? I'm listening. Everybody just excellent. See, that was a unanimous decision out there, Nicholas. The unanimous decision was hold. Definitely hold. So what do we got with Taiwan Semiconductor? It's only the 25th. Well, geez, that means we're almost at the end of the month. And guess what? You're going to get a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside on a monthly time frame. That's right. The B point out here, which is actually labeled number B, that's part of the Chapman wave, not the B point of the A to B equals CD, although it happens to be that as well out there. That happens to be from the trading month of June of 2023. Volume there was 247 million shares. We're at 256 as we speak right now. Your one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern, that gets us up into 135.19. Uh, 28.66 is a TD nine count breakdown resistance. That's where this has a party. It's a party between 128 and 135. And if it can close above the 128 level, even though 135 is next up, I'd say this gets all the way back to its all-time highs out there. Um, and it uh, tackles that uh, swing point out here from uh, January of 2022. On a weekly basis, the uh, B point had volume out here of 74 million shares. That was passed last week with 125 million shares. So there's confirmed A to B equals CD patterns to the upside, whether it's daily that we look at, weekly that we look at, monthly that we look at. So I would say, I would agree with everybody in the audience there. They all said, hold. Hold this puppy out there. So I hope that that helps you out, uh, Nicholas, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. David in Panama City is asking the question, will Federal Express go ahead and fill the gap out there? And that is a gigantic gap. And the answer to that question will really come from whether or not it can close above the top of its daily profile. And the top of its daily profile was tested today, and so far that level is held. That's at 254.52. Does that mean you should sell? 
Uh, no, it just means that price ran into resistance out here. Now, with regard to Federal Express, uh, look at the daily time frame. I don't have any kind of a bottoming pattern out there. So without a bottoming pattern, this suggests that Federal Express might want to move lower, move lower and get back and test the October 26 lows out there. Would I make that call just yet? No, I wouldn't make that call until we get back below the uh, swing point out here from January the 17th. But right now you're asking, can it fill that gap? And uh, I think you've got options that are expiring here shortly. And this thing has run smack dab right up into resistance. That's at, that's at that 254 level. The only other benchmark that maybe I could look at here, David, is the swing point from December 29th. And the problem with that, that's December 29th. That's light volume was 1.9 million shares. When we hit that yesterday, it was with 2.4. 2.4 going into 1.9, and the 1.9 was during a holiday. Huh. Today so far, in a little over two hours of trading, 594, so you're at about 1.8 as you move into that swing point that's got 1.9 or so. You'd like to see price push into that swing point with volume, but you're up against resistance. I apologize. I don't have access to that email. I just simply wrote it down, and, and I don't recall the timing that you're looking at out here. The week, The monthly chart looks pretty good. Uh, looks like it may want to go retarget 270.95 in the weekly 259.21, but that's really not what you're dealing with. You're dealing with daily, and maybe by providing you with that profile number, that's going to assist you with regard to that. As far as Federal Express on an intraday time period out here, intraday you've got a Rosemont indicator top that just formed for the 65 minute time frame. Let's see what we've got going on on the 30 minute basis out here. 30 minute chart also. Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top suggesting move back to about the 249 to 250 level out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Federal Express, David. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. LB wants to go take a look at Uranium. U-R-N-M is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, let's get over to that. See what that is doing. Uh, and the question here, I think I've had this question here lately, is where to get in on this. So we've got that wave seven. We are trading below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. We saw one close below it a few days ago, and then it got back up. So we haven't had two consecutive closes out here. Price is moving into this gap. This gap had volume out here of 2.2 uh, million shares. So far today, 238,000 shares have traded. So you could be getting towards a buy level. We'd want to see some type of confirmed pattern on an intraday chart out here. I look at the weekly chart, Lee, and uh, it's got support at 52.22. That's that green oscillator and change line. And uh, no topping pattern that is in place out here. So let's look at a 30-minute chart and see if we can figure this out. Uh, URNM on a uh, does not have a bottom, does not have a TD9 count bottom. Did this create an A to B equals CD pattern? Struggling here with this. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Let me try a 15 minute chart out there. Let's see what the 15 minute chart says here, Lee. 15 minute chart's got a TD9 count bottom. So if price can close about 53 bucks. Uh, you know, that would suggest at least a further rally up to 54.20. So what else can I share with you about uranium out here? You'd sure like to see it at least touch that swing point. I don't think it has. The swing point high is 52.37. The low today is, huh, I take it back, it did 52.36. So you might really be there, Lee. Uh, let's look at consecutive days up and down out here for URNM. Let's see what we have here that we can pass on to you. It looks like today will become day number two. So you should at least, uh, this is, you know, we've only really seen mostly two uh, day uh, knee jerk reaction lows out there. So if this really is a uh, knee jerk reaction low, then, um, then today could be it. It also would suggest to us, though, so volume on the trading day of January 22nd was 1 million shares, and today we've done 240. So we're still coming in light. I was going to say a price did close below that low out there. Uh, that low, by the way, from a few, a few days ago, that was on the 22nd, was 52.74. Uh, Lee, if you got a close below that, that would trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. We don't have that just yet. We're coming in with light volume. I'm good with you starting a position uh, right now out here inside of URNM. So I hope that helps you out. 
Um, I would have preferred to have a different, you know, better bottoming pattern on the daily time frame. But you take what you can get out there and no complaints. Fletch wants to take a look at NU out here. So let's pull those charts up. NU is trading out at about $9.25, and it is taking on the top of its daily profile. The top of that daily profile is at $9.25 out there. So let me pull this back on the daily time frame. See what I see out here. See if there's anything, any other patterns or anything. <laughs> Pull this back even further out here. So there's an A to B equals CD, but that should be on the weekly time frame as well out here. So on the daily time frame, I'm going to go with, I don't really see a top here just yet. I just see a consolidation uh, fletch with inside its uh, profile level. And if you can close above, well, you're trading into a swing point. This is a daily time frame. This swing point has volume of 45 million so far today. You're up with 10 million. So you're moving into that swing point with light volume. You got a consolidation going on right now inside that profile. Again, your resistance was up at the 925 and support is down at 875. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, to finish off new for Fletch, uh, Fletch, uh, I wanted to share with you that new on a monthly basis look like it's going to negate a TD9 count top. That suggests making a run for its uh, IPO high out there. We're trading inside that candle. We're doing it with volume. 
So that looks positive. On the weekly chart, everything is all out bullish. You're above a green oscillator and change line. You're above the top of the profile. So just a consolidation inside the daily time frame, but otherwise everything else looks hunky-dory. Let's go take a look at IBCP. This is for McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den. IBCP, IBCP is what? Well, it's trading at 24.48 right now, and that is below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. So what I can share with you first, Fletch, is that if we get a close below that, it's signal a potential change in trend, profile change in trend. A second close tomorrow below that level would confirm that. Now, you've got a momentum indicator top. I got a wave number seven pattern that is also in place out here. Price should go target 2302. I say should because right now what price is done, you've got a weekly TD9 count top. You've got a weekly momentum indicator top. But price has found support at that green oscillator and change line. That's at 24.30. And not until price gets below that, closes below that, will this chart change its signal to bearish from now neutral. Why neutral? Because it had a top. When you have a top, you find out that I'll be, you, you will start watching for support. How does price react at support? In this case here for IBCP, support is held on that weekly time frame. So watch that 2430 level. If you get a close below that, 2302 is wide open. Lastly, let's go take a look at ticker symbol BTAI. That's for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan, you got to love this. BTAI, if it can close today above 305, uh, this is going to give you a confirmed change in trend signal out there because price for that will be a close above a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So 305 is the number you're looking for. If price closes above that, then you're looking for a move into the 369 level. Uh, 369 is the center of its bearish structured weekly profile. Folks, thank you all so much for all those requests. Look at that. It took us right through the end of the show. As Tom likes to say, that's a beautiful thing. And stay tuned, folks, for all the great program we've got lined up for you. I'll be back tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Have a terrific Thursday. Be safe out there.